does it change the fact that you're a pastor if you have done something illegal? No, it doesn't. Honestly speaking, life in a nutshell, uh, mm. to be specific, Christianity, yeah. is very confusing. Because <laughs> let's look at it this way. <laughs> let's look at it this okay. way, Wadi. <laughs> we okay. have situations okay. where if men of God are doing so well, it's a situation mm. where people say it's not genuine. I don't trust such men of God. Mm. But again, if a man of God is not doing so well, people will say he's praying for people to become rich. Why isn't he rich himself? Mm. You know? And then people are also forgetting saying, these men of God, before they were, they were chosen to walk in, 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 their, in their paths or their purpose, mm. they're just normal human beings like us. Even mm. when they're still pastors, they're normal human beings. And it's normal for a man of God to err as well. So people shouldn't rush to be judgmental, mm. especially if you look at Hubert Angel's case. Yeah. People shouldn't rush to be judgmental saying he's not a true man of God. Yeah. Someone can still be a man of God, a woman of God, but they still sin. Look at um, Paul in, in Romans chapter 8, I think. Mm. He even stated saying he was... A strong man, you know, he was a, a strong man spiritually, mm. but he still had uh, problems with, sin, with sinning in the flesh. He still yeah. had those uh, desires to sin in the flesh, but it didn't change the fact that he was chosen by God to lead people. Yeah. So in as much as you are uh, a man of God and then you do illegal things, it doesn't take away that that name tag from you saying you cease to be a man of God because you've done... Yeah, you've because you're this, fake. Yes, like you're because fake. you've made this mistake. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. That, that, uh, that's a very powerful point. Um, <laughs> and I'll conclude with Pastor Mebin and by giving him this. So there's this guy we all know very well. I mean, we love him to death. And um, this man was called a man after God's heart, mm -hmm. by God. So there's a guy after my own heart, mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. His name is David. Yeah. Now, this guy, what he did, First and foremost, he took someone's woman, mm -hmm. got the husband killed, did all wrong things that you can think of. Exactly. But he was still called a person after my own heart. He was punished because of the consequences. Mm. Doesn't mean when you're wrong, you won't be punished. There are consequences. There are consequences. Definitely. But it doesn't change that you're still a man after God's heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's a very good, actually, example that you have given, more especially for the viewers who are watching this program, because uh, we are not here to justify any error, mm. but we are standing on the word of God. And I like how the way my presenter word has given us the example of uh, David, the man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. Look at the life that he lived. Yet, this is the man, when you look at the brokenness of his heart, time and again, David could go before the Lord in prayer, lamenting, confessing, and uh, touched him. And we never know why God had to embrace him like that. And uh, like the topic that we are, we are discussing yeah. over, you know, servants of God becoming rich. Of course, what we are saying, the means, the way of how you acquire Pause it there. Just pause it there. I know. Acquiring is your last <laughs> word. <laughs> Mr. Mlenga from Mufrila, your last caller. Good morning. How are you? Mm, fine, thank you. And how are you, son? Great, yes, your contribution. I don't know if you can allow me to, to speak in vain, but... No problem. Okay. If you call the property, tradesman who got a business, I don't think it's right because you uh, can't finish your business. Your business is a quarter. I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a Hello, my yeah. business, my living is in this city. Quite a good son of no, 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 So, um, it's more like a little bit of 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 a little Dani, one box taking to feed it. A book at two for funin that's more than a Mr. Friday. Yes, please. I have a question. So, uh, you're talking about choosing between being a clergyman and being a business person. So, if, if yes, you please. decide to be a clergyman, then how are you likely to survive if you just concentrate on preaching alone? If you're a clergyman, mm -hmm. that's why they are congregants. They need to contribute just to help you. You can't do things, do two things at a time. You are making money this side and you are preaching to the people. 
Hmm. Have you ever tried relying on people in life? <laughs> you, you, you don't. I know. Let me answer my brother. Let me answer him. Let me answer him like this, you okay. know. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mlenga, but you can answer. My God, <laughs> my dear brother. <laughs> You know, you can suffer and you can even start now expressing your anger on the book. I have seen men of God today, the person who, who gives tithe, if that month yeah. he skips tithe, how the way is coming out. Yeah. Because you, you, your eyes, your mind is on the basket, on the coffer. So I advise, I've seen men of God, I've seen men of God, not even, even you know, some of the priests today in the Catholics who are running serious businesses you know and uh, even the Catholic it, itself is running hey, serious business. I'm telling you I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you so I think our mindset should change you know even when at some years when I was in the Bible school almost about you know 18 years ago <laughs> we were advised find something as a tent maker tent, mm -hmm. tent making Don't put trust in so, man. If you put your trust, you know, in man, I mm. think, or in the basket or what, I love you'll the example be disappointed. He gave, eh? you know? yeah. He said, you, you, know, you just bend your anger on congregation. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, when I'm going to oh, you wait. You know. Ah, man of God, Chan. I once yeah. went to a church, eh? Mm. And there's this thing called pastor's basket. Yeah. So, you know, people offered a lot of things. There was uh, trays of eggs, yeah. soap, mm. chicken. Then the elder now stands and says, no, pastor is not happy. Next time, don't bring these things because all of you have brought the same thing. <laughs> we have five trays. <laughs> just bring money. My Next God. time, just bring money. <laughs> I don't really have five of it. <laughs> Breakfast. Anyway, okay. Yeah. yeah, what yeah. Is, yeah. But, but, let's but, close. Let's close. What you're saying is very true. Let's close. You know, I, you know we, we, we run a, you know, a small business. Mm -hmm. in, in our yard, we, we have got a pottery house yes. mm -hmm. where we buy this, you know, tumawai chicken grows and we sell, mm -hmm. you know, just to keep us, you know, going and running as we are saving God. So I would advise men of God, at least find something or maybe go and buy suits and you sell, yeah. you know, of course, you know, don't enter into this, you know, deals that you know the source where you are getting your money God. is wrong. <laughs> or crooking people, conning people, I think that's where the problem is. But if your business is right, divinely given by God, I think there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And I advise men of God and even some of the congregants, if you can venture into certain businesses that can help you, well and good, is fine. Mm -hmm. So with us on Morning Bliss, thank you very much for joining us.